distinction is the significance of denominators. We, won't, we don't want to belabor the point everyone knows the significance of denominators, but since we have started, the sphere, I think it's the sphere guideline of the one per 10,000 per day, as we can imagine. This has actually, you know, there is, there is an advantage to having structure, and there's a disadvantage to having a structure. The minute you put one per 10,000 per, per day, that becomes a kind of an, um, you know, um, a déclenchement, or what? Um, you know, something that releases humanitarian money. That's what happens. Uh, for many of the humanitarian crises, it's a political decision anyway. You decide you have to give Darfur money or you have to give something money because there's political pressure. You give the money, it doesn't matter what the, 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 the mortality rate is. But some others, it's not the case. And if you don't have the right denominators, all we want to point out over here, if you don't have the right denominators, you can have a situation, if you don't calculate well, you can have a situation where your CMR can be just below or above the one mark. And if you need to cut it off somewhere to be able to justify your release of humanitarian funds, you can actually have a make or break situation for a humanitarian crisis. Obviously, you can, we can always say that the functionaries in the, I don't know, in the Anita or wherever, should use you know, intelligence to decide whether this is close enough and we should release. But still, most of the time, they need a cut off. They say it's one, and that's it. We really and so calculation of denominators becomes an extremely critical, um, critical aspect since we have this one per 10,000 per day criteria for humanitarian emergencies. We have two more questions of definitions, comparing apples and oranges. Deaths in natural disasters is a real problem, as I, uh, we have seen over the 15 years we run the MDAT database. Uh, we, there is a definition, natural disasters mortality signifies people killed at the moment of the disaster as a direct result of it collapse of buildings, flying debris, drowning, etc. The problem very often is that estimates include the missing, and so you have the missing and the dead, and then you, have, you start having very great variations in the estimates that come in because the missing show up again, um, and then the numbers go down, or the mission is missing, don't show up, and so on and so forth. So, People report how many people are dead, but they don't say whether they are including missing or not. For conflicts, death due to conflicts is a whole different can of worms, and I think it's much less defined. It's, there's, a, there's a very, very active debate going around there, and it's not an obvious thing. Who has died of the conflict? Apart from battle-related deaths, it's an open question. Defining the displaced is also a big deal. Persons forced to flee their homes as a result of armed conflict or natural disasters, and who have not crossed an international if they cross an international border, they are refugees. So internally displaced, they should be their homes. The questions then remain, how much, how far did they have to have gone from their homes? 10 kilometers, 5 kilometers, 25 kilometers? What can be considered a displaced person if the person's home has been flooded and they have moved 3 kilometers to their cousin's home? <coughs> a displaced person. Duration, how long will they have to be away from their homes? Do they have to be away Five days, 10 days, two months, eight years, what is the, the period? So all of these remain undefined. Finally, the question of exposure, how big is the problem? This is an important question because these are issues that are very much in the press today. How big, how important is the problem in, I don't know, whichever country there's a war going on right now, Cote d'Ivoire or something. And then the, question, the, the, the answers, what we have to look at is how do we define it? Are these areas with armed and rebel hostilities? Are they areas with displaced population and refugees? So no hostilities, but a lot of displaced people. Are there areas with political unrest, violent government oppression? Myanmar, is all of Myanmar a conflict affected country? Is it or is it not? Because if you don't, if you cannot put a parameter, you don't have an analysis. Communities hosting refugees and IDP camps. So what about the people, what about the poor, poor, poor villages in Chad who have all these Darfur is <coughs> are they, can they be con considered affected? And here are the different maps that by the different criteria for Somalia you can see affected. This one is a, a <coughs> our map is affected divided up uh, by occupational group, I think livelihood groups, mortality by livelihood groups. This one is displacement, so the, the these orange areas, deep orange areas, are where the, the displaced people are, and therefore, for this particular IDMC, this, this, these are the affected areas. 
This one is food security by USAID, and it's still the cent center of Somalia, which is largely affected. And this is conflict areas of HIU, where there are hostilities and terrorist attack. These blue crosses in the sea are pirate attacks. And so these, for them, this would be the affected area. So affected by conflict needs some definition if you're going to have a systematic analysis of the situation. Costs and benefits of documentation. I would like to leave you with three costs that very often go unnoticed but need to be considered opportunity costs. If you're doing data collection, if you're doing documentation, you're taking up time of people who, are, who could be doing something else. You are taking up time of workers at the local level who, are, who could be employed in doing something else, giving vaccination, giving out food, managing something else, taking them out of their jobs and you're getting them to do this. There are opportunity costs. Human lives costs, risking the lives of staff who work to get data from insecure areas. In 2008, 268 workers, humanitarian aid workers, were killed, kidnapped, or injured in violent attacks. This is not an insignificant consideration. And the third is cash costs. I have no idea what surveys actually cost, but I have had in various meetings and conferences estimates that are, people seem to say, oh, well, a survey of this kind will cost a million dollars. That's sort of the minimum. I don't know about all of you, but a million dollars for me is quite a lot of money. And you know, with a, with a reducing pile for the humanitarian aid, you quite used to think about whether you want to buy, do a survey with a million dollars, which will take a year before the results are out, or whether you want to buy soap for the people. Overall, the most, after all of this, you know, we are all technicians and we like to deal with numbers and we like to deal with models and all of that. But mostly, I think there is a ethical issue involved over here. There's a very important ethical issue about undertaking these surveys. Apart from the issues that I have raised through my presentation, which all of them, somewhere down the line, has an ethical question. When you do surveys, this is something we were discussing, when you do surveys, and many of the surveys, these are time-consuming affairs, not time-consuming for the, for, the, for the interviewers, time-consuming for the people wanting to answer. I think when you're dealing with poor people, poor women, who have three children to take care of, who water to bring up, firewood to gather, who are not feeling well. And you have somebody who comes in and says, I want you to sit down and answer this questionnaire for two hours, three hours. Think about whether you would do it. If somebody knocked on your door on Sunday morning, this Sunday morning at 10 o'clock and said, I would like to sit down in your house and spend three hours <coughs> for you to fill out a questionnaire for me, for which there is no concrete benefit you're going to get whether you would do it. And that, I think, is an ethical question that we should think about. That's one specific thing. But there are others. The money we spend. Are there any real decisions being made from this stuff that will help us? And I think these are things we have to